right, we're in a small town and we're like feeling like we need to leave our big city life behind. Do you love my wine? Um, and I don't mean the drink. <laughs> Obviously not. I think I'm funny. Okay, we, <laughs> if you haven't been able to tell already, small town romances, all right? They're a big thing. Not a huge small town romance girly. But I gave them a go. Here are the results. All right. Fake idea, as always, before I get into this, if you want to know what these books are, go look them up yourself. Fake Identity at Stake by Lisa Renee. <laughs> I don't mean that in a mean way. I gave this book three stars. This book had me in two minds. Um, one hand, it had good characters and their romance was pretty good on the whole. But this was a romance book with a crime subplot. Normally, you have a crime book with a romance subplot and that works really well. This didn't. Oh dear. The crime slash witsec elements weren't woven into the story easily, and when it was brought up, it either felt shallow or rushed. I know it was a subplot, but I really, really, I didn't think it worked in this one. Um, I would have loved if this story had been fleshed out more, and the witsec and crime side of the story was developed a bit. Uh, I also think the ending was really rushed as well. It felt disjointed with the rest of the story. I really did like Lisa Renee's writing overall and characters. Uh, the plot idea was awesome. Just a few hiccups for a crime reader to overcome. <clears throat> this is why sometimes they say don't like, you know, go into other genres if you're not used to writing them. And um, because sometimes this can happen, right? Like it's fine to have romance and crime in the same book, but if your crime is the subplot, you really need to know what you're, you know, you need to know the crime audience. You know what I'm saying? All right, next book. Cupcakes and Crumbs by Marissa McClone. I'm so sorry. D N F. I made it three chapters. Three. I <laughs> three chapters. I can count. Um, before I knew this one wasn't for me. Grief front and center. Drama. A toxic slash abusive relationship. And just none of it was calling my name. Not the type of story I enjoy. So it was safer to just put it aside. I wouldn't have liked this book. It was better for me to just D N F. I cannot stand. I don't understand people who stay in toxic relationships with like the your partner is pulling you dragging you down like just because your house is nice forget that no absolutely not cannot stand it I was out next book finding my destiny by Natalie Bright and Denise F McAllister I feel like I've talked about this book before but we're going to do it again two stars this is a small town romance two stars this had elements that could have been good if the main character main characters weren't so insufferable. Uh, what kind of grown ass woman lets her mother run her life and take away her phone, not tell her how much money she's making or even when they're going and what shows they've booked until the last minute, she's a singer, choose her outfits and not say a single damn word. None that I know of. Intellectually, I can understand if you've lived under someone your whole life, it would be difficult to break out of that. But she's married with a kid and nobody is saying nothing. Heck no, makes no sense. I agree with myself. It was just such a silly character. I don't understand. I was excited for the singer on the road aspect and interested to see how that would affect the husband and child left behind. But Travis seemed like a spineless whiner and Destiny was a personalityless blob. Uh, I don't know why we had a Christmas countdown when the story had basically nothing to do with it. The ranch sections I personally found quite boring. Uh, the story is about two people in a marriage, but there's zero romance and they spend the whole book almost apart. There was so much about this book that either didn't make sense or didn't seem to fit. Maintain that. It was not for me. Next one, Diving Into Love by Kat Bellamore. Um, I gave this 3.5 stars. I liked it. Short, sweet and cute. Small town romance. Uh, small town and romance that was a little insta-love-ish. Mm, but I didn't really mind too much. Um, I don't usually like insta-love. I think that's ridiculous. But, you know, like you can be attracted. Like, whatevs. Uh, most of the writing was nice. And there were a few lines or moments here and there that fell a little flat. It felt a little bit, um, what's the word? Cliché. Um, I was actually, I actually wished I could have been, it could have been a little longer, but it didn't feel too short and the pace was really good. Um, I would have loved to have, have this be a little longer. I, I did really enjoy this. I think it could have been, if it was expanded a little, it could have been a really cool full size book. Um, but I did like the short, you know, it did do well, it did well, it did well, it did well. Okay. Next book, we're going well. Uh, With You in Wild Orchards by Rania Batney. I actually met Rania, Ra Rania, Rania, I want to say Rania, 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 Rania. I'm so sorry, girl. Anyway, 3.5 stars. Q 
cute small town feels all the way through. The story was fueled by grief, finding who you really are, what your passion is, and love. The romance was good. I enjoyed the characters and how they came together. The third act conflict really almost came at the end of the book, which meant uh, resolution was very quick. Uh, I didn't mind, though. Mature and reasonable adults could easily resolve things the way we've seen it, uh, we see happen in a quicker resolution. Uh, and I think this one was written quite well. So sometimes things are ex like just way postponed and, and expanded when they don't need to like just have a reasonable conversation this one was pretty good um next book so there's only a couple more so here we go Bryn and Sebastian hate each other by Bethany Turner love Bethany Turner she's one of my favorite authors 4.5 stars <laughs> I've talked about this book before but let's do it anyway enemies to lovers a mountain small town broadcast journalist and some amazing banter yeah this one had it all and more um except for that 0.5 stars it missed out on <laughs> sorry <laughs> Sorry. Um, the laugh out loud, out loud one-liners that always seem to accompany Bethany's books were on point with two characters that were like oil and water, sort of, biting back and forth in a hilarious exchange, particularly Sebastian's side. We followed their relationship from first exchange to last, from Bryn's attempt to gain back the trust of a whole nation from a live television slip-up to Seb's mysterious past and current responsibilities. These two... Um, and people around them were a really great uh, combination, sort of like a flavor. And while Sebastian was my favorite of the two characters, having just a bit more likability than Bryn, <laughs> um, I enjoyed the development of it all. The plot moved smooth smoothly, and we got a lovely ending to boot. Bryn and Sebastian may hate each other, but I loved them. I loved my little clip at the end, so I decided to include it again for you guys. Um, absolutely adored that. Cole and Lila are just friends, um, has also come out. They are two characters that were introduced in Bryn and Sebastian, uh, in the small town. Um, that was also a really great book. Loved that. Go check that out too, because it was so, so much fun. Except that takes place in New York, so not technically a small town romance. Um, although they are small town people, I guess. Um, but anyway, so that was also really fun. <laughs> I loved that book too. Um, Magpie's Bend by Maya Linnell. Last one. Here we go. 3.5 stars. Boy, this certainly was an Aussie book. <laughs> no hiding, no apologizing, no shying away for other audiences, just Australia all the way around. Rural Australia, mind you, not a bad thing, but it was a little distracting at times, like the references were thrown in for the sake of having it. Uh, having said that, it was still engaging and interesting. I liked the element of saving the store in a little town, writing for a small town newspaper, and family dynamics with romance thrown in. This is my second book by Maya, and I liked this one a lot better. It had an overarching plot but also focused on small town rural feels. I did quite like that. I thought it was a really good read, actually. Uh, the first one I read, I think, was Kookaburra Cottage, I want to say. Didn't really enjoy it as much. Um, but I had both of these two books by Maya <coughs> signed. And so I wanted to read this one because I'm like, I've got a signed copy of it. Like, let's read it. Why not? I mean, come on. Hello. Um, and I really liked that one, actually. So it did well. I did good. I enjoyed it. A uh, bit of a mixed bag, to be honest, with small town romances. Sometimes I can really enjoy them and sometimes they're just not at all my cup of tea. But there you go. Those are the ones that I've read. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the adventures.